the volume is low. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any way for me to turn it up on my end or if you have to turn it up on your end. Let's see, text and video. <clears throat> Output. I've got my mic volume up all the way, so <clears throat> I will just try to talk louder. Maybe, Gary, your microphone is down, <clears throat> or your speakers are down, excuse me. <clears throat> so today, I want to kind of, you know, yesterday we spent a lot of time just kind of going through charts and what I wanted to do today is kind of pull it together, um, <laughs> right? Um, today's Friday, January 6th. Um, you know, look, first things first, through the education page. Um, obviously, the tutorials in the education page are, you know, that's where the user guide is. I have to say, since we've started the Discord, um, you know, this is a really, really good way for us to organize your ability to train yourself. And when I say train yourself, look, once you understand the basics, right, of where to get in, where to get out, how to read the software, you are the one who is going to be, um, hang on one second. here there we go I think that's better all right <clears throat> so I was sharing a window down a screen all right everybody can see the website um, again the website's a great thing I think that the discord uh, for you guys and again I've got two streams going I've got one for YouTube and one for uh, the chat room um, this self-training info, if you actually are new to NextGen or newer to NextGen, if you start at the top and work your way to the bottom, everything that you need is there, 100%. And, you know, look, the short version of what you're looking for is good top, good bottom, strong triggers. And whenever you have a good top or a good bottom and strong triggers, that's going to create for us, you know, the trend trade opportunities in the middle. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit more time today uh, talking about what we did yesterday, which was <clears throat> not necessarily the trend trade in the middle, but some of the other opportunities that... Uh, present themselves um, so yesterday you know and again look the more volatile it is a larger chart kind of slows things down a little bit um, as you guys saw from this morning you know look yesterday we spent a lot of time <clears throat> saying that the market should make it down to 3819 you guys remember that right I mean other, you know we spent a lot of time saying it's going to make 38.19 and it should have. And, you know, again, the market messed around a little bit and overnight they messed around a little bit. But ultimately this morning they made it to the Fibonacci support that we were talking about. And boy, did they, right? Um, 8.30 was unemployment news and all kinds of news that came out. Um it created an untradable spike. I mean, literally, if you look at the timestamps on this, it's 8.30 the entire time all the way up to FIBS. <clears throat> the nice thing is that you can take away from this, and again, it's not that you missed a trade or you missed opportunities or anything else. The key takeaway from what you're looking at right here is what? The fibs held, the fibs held, the fibs held, and then ultimately the fibs held over here. 
<clears throat> that's the key takeaway. And, you know, again, as you uh, start to work your way through the charts, you know, the, the idea, and again, I want you guys to tell me if this makes sense or doesn't make sense to you, but the idea is to get a good top and then have the triggers roll or a good bottom and then have the triggers roll. And that's where we get our opportunities from. After a good top, after the triggers roll, these are your opportunities to go short. Or if fibs hold and the triggers roll up, your opportunities to go long until we reach you know, some type of Fibonacci resistance. <clears throat> and again, if we reach Fibonacci resistance, we start the process over. We start going to the downside. Um, ultimately, when we reach Fibonacci support, and again, it's not just Fibonacci support, right? It's Fibonacci support. <clears throat> Let me blow this up a little bit for you. It's Fibonacci support. It's pivot stopouts. It's trigger lines rolling. And this is what we classify as a good bottom. And, you know, anytime you have a good bottom and your trigger lines roll up strong together, usually you're going to get a push to the upside. Now, we don't know how high it's going to go. You never know. <clears throat> but the look is the same over and over and over and over. And, you know, again, that brings us to, you know, when we reach a fib, we still have to anticipate what's going to happen. Is it going to stop? Is it going to break? And we don't have to know what's going to happen. We have to read what is happening. And that's a big difference. I think a lot of new users to our software think they have to know what's going to happen. And you don't. You have to know what just happened. And you have to know what's happening now. And based on those two things, you're able to put yourself in a position to make money. So, for example, just to use this one, since it's live, when we reach Fibonacci resistance, one-to-ones, we're going to read the trigger lines and we're going to say, hey, are they slowing down? Are they weak? If the answer is no, then the Fib area might break, which is fine. And if the triggers get above the Fib area and we get a little pullback, you can take a long trade to the next fib area. <clears throat> and then when we reach the fib area again, again, I'm kind of doing this on the top right edge here. We have to ask ourselves, how strong are the triggers this time? Notice the difference here. Small triggers are outside the large triggers over here. Small triggers are inside the large triggers over here. So if you were long, you would definitely want to be out of your position. Now, they went a little bit further, which is their prerogative. All right, so here's a question for you. Did the fibs hold or did they not hold? I'll throw that out there. And again, anytime you trade into Fibonacci resistance with a weaker trigger line, it has more opportunity to hold. Now, where's the trade? I don't know. We'll have to go look at trades and see. <clears throat> I want you guys to go through a routine over this weekend. Um, since, you know, I just want you to get a chart. And again, look, I use boxes wherever there's a top or a bottom that's significant. So one-to-ones with divergence. So I'll just start right there. Is everybody okay with this? I just want you guys to see this. I draw boxes <clears throat> to represent a potential good top. Everybody give me a why if you understand this. Easy, right? And why is it a good top? It's had divergence, one-to-ones, the triggers were below, we went down. And you don't know what's going to happen after that box. You just know that that was a good bottom or a good top. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll draw these boxes where, you know, again, look, here's one here. I would say, and I would say there's one here. And then obviously there's one down here. 
And what, you know, what I want to do is, especially with the 21-3 chart, is I want to see on the other charts, where do these boxes come into play? Because this is one of the, you know, look, if you're looking for 5-1 trend trades because of your 21-3 chart, it's going to be tough. Because the 21-3 chart is too darn slow for a 5-1 trend trade. You guys hear what I'm saying? The 13-2 chart is the right speed for a 5-1 trend trade. Um, I made a picture earlier this morning. Did you guys see this one? Um, let me blow it up here in a browser so you guys can see. <clears throat> Again, look, this was one this morning that using a 13-2-21-3 combination. You know, I thought it was such a nice... Uh, follow up to what we did yesterday on the 21.3 chart. Um, so look, let's start at the top. Good resistance. Why is it good? Well, it held. Okay. You don't know it's going to hold right off the bat. Does everybody understand that? You don't know it's going to hold. You just know it's a red line. So that's not a short trade right away. If you're only using a 13-2 and a 21-3 chart, then that's a good top. And then this is your strong triggers. And then because of your strong triggers here, you could sell the mid bands and fibs over here and make a little money. <clears throat> Does everybody understand why this is not 13-2-5-1? It doesn't matter what chart you use, guys. It doesn't matter if you use a daily bar and a four hour bar. It doesn't matter if you use a 55 range chart and a 21 range chart. You just need a large chart, small chart combination. And again, the ones that we've laid out for you are really good fit to each other, right? Fibonacci numbers, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, they work really, really synergistically together. Um, now, when you're looking at your 21-3-13-2 chart, if you took a short there and made some money, you'd be pretty happy. And then notice, look, the low over here was the pivot stop out over here. So, you know, again, that's a really good target area. <clears throat> what happens at a pivot stop out? We went through this yesterday and I said something very, 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 very specific. What was it? The specificness of a pivot stop out is it doesn't mean that we won't ever go down again. What it means is that we're going to bounce higher before we go down again. And I said this on a 5-1 chart yesterday. Let me see if I can find that picture. Hmm. Bear with me here. Pull up my history. And again, look, the, the, you know, you can see it on this chart. The pivot stop out over here makes us bounce higher. So, you know, again, you're not looking to sell lower areas. Now, fortunately for us, you know, the market did from that pivot stop out go a little bit higher. And, you know, this is where we're going to talk about, you know, like my trading plan. You know, again, if you're waiting for a 5-1 trend trade, what do you get? You're sitting there saying, well, both triggers aren't crossed down. Am I right? I can't do a 5-1 trend trade because both triggers aren't crossed down. But I want you to think about the trade you're doing. You're not doing a 5-1 trend trade. You're trading off of the edges of the 21-3 chart that are supposed to go down to... 38.19. Does that make sense? So you're not trading a, you know, and that, that's the difference in, in trading plans when you're looking at, bear with me here. I found my pictures from yesterday. All right, so here's the picture from yesterday. I'll just pull it up real quick. 
And again, what I wrote on the chart is the same thing that, you know, we were talking about earlier. A 13-2 termination doesn't mean it will never go down again. It just means don't take 5-1 trend trades, right? Look a little deeper. Does that make sense? So you get the same thing this morning when you we were looking at, um, bear with me here, I lost it. When we were looking at the pivot stop out on the 21.3 chart, it just meant don't sell the first area on the 13.2 chart, wait for a higher bounce. Anyway, you got the higher bounce. <clears throat> and this is, you know, what I wanted to go through today. And I just kind of wanted to show you again, you know, I think most of you, and tell me if you're not familiar yet, if you're brand new, maybe not, but the trend trade rules when all the trend trade and all the triggers and everything are perfect, everybody okay with this? Again, if you go through this self-training info page, which I don't want to do 101 remedial stuff today. Um, if you if you need it, go to our YouTube live. You can watch 150 hours of how to do an exact 13251 trend trade. This is the one that for me, I think when you start recognizing good tops and good bottoms, adds a lot more to your bottom line. And it takes a little bit to get used to. Um, so look, this is going to bleed into why or what we were talking about as far as drawing the boxes on the charts. You have to be a really, really good analyst to say this is going to probably be a very good top or it's not going to be a good top. Because when you can say this is going to be a good top, then you can be more assertive on your smaller charts. Does that make sense? So let me show you how it looks, you know, on the trade that we were talking about this morning. I want to make sure you guys, everybody can see three charts. So because we had a good top on the 21.3 chart, because the triggers were strong down on the 21.3 chart, because everything was still down and we hit mid bands and fibs on the 21.3 chart, and because we anticipated we're going to make it down to 38.19, that's a whole bunch of stuff, right? Down, 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 everything says down. And, you know, this is where new users get confused. They'll start doing trend trade longs. And, and again, it's not that you couldn't maybe do a trend trade long there. <clears throat> but eventually it gave out. This is out of my plan right here. It's called the first place to sell short. So again, but you have to predicate this with, I know we have a good top. I know we have all the reasons in place. And then you guys remember the trade that Janesh did yesterday? And you're like, damn, he made 10 points before the triggers even rolled. <clears throat> Do you guys understand this concept? Again, we had another picture to this effect yesterday. Let me see if I can find it. I posted it in the room. It was after hours. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. But it was an exact, uh, here, I'll post it in for you guys so you guys can see it. Again, if this is helpful, tell me. If it's not helpful or if I'm confusing the crap out of you, tell me. But this is the S&P yesterday afternoon on NinjaTrader 8. So I want you to only look at the 21.3 chart first. Can we agree that this is a pivot stop out at Fibonacci resistance? We can all agree to that, right? It's a good termination condition. When we go to the 13.2 chart, we also have one-to-ones, pivot stop out. And then when we go to the smaller chart, we also have 
divergence from resistance. So you get a couple of opportunities. We actually did the trend trade in here and got flat right there, but that one actually got run over. That one lost, believe it or not. Um, anyway, but look, I digressed, sorry. In my trading plan, I'm looking for the first opportunity to get short if, and this is my plan, it doesn't have to be your plan, the first opportunity to get short if the top is really, really good on every chart. Everybody give me a yes or a no, or you have no effing clue what I'm talking about. I want to make sure you guys are on point here. And again, sometimes you get run over. You know, that's part of trading. So the quality of the top or bottom is the most paramount portion of this checklist. Look what my checklist says. 13.2 and 5.1 and market flow charts all suggest that a termination condition is true. It's not one chart. It's all my charts say the same thing at the same place at the same time. Does that make sense? So when we look at you know, this picture here, I mean, obviously you can't see the market flow chart in this one. Bear with me here. Where was that other picture? All right, this one. You can see, uh, you can't see the top of the market flow chart, but 21.3 chart said it, 13.2 chart said it, divergence from a fib on the 5.1 chart, every chart said it. So as such, if it's a really good top, sell the shit out of it way before you ever get your first trend trade and make all that extra money. And then you effectively will double your profit potential in a day, if not triple. Did you guys just hear what I said? You're going to have to take some time to get used to how to enter and the looks that you're going to enter with. And, but literally, how many times have you sat there and said, oh, it's a good top or a good bottom. And then you sat there going, I'm going to wait for the triggers to roll. And then it's all the way over here. And you're like, damn it. I missed all the money. <laughs> How many times? Jose, there are rules for entry. Jose, I pick them. So look. So here's my rule. I'll just type it in. So I want momentum. So look, it's a momentum style entry, if you will. Okay, so watch. We'll do it. We'll look at, let's see what else we got. Let me find another example here for you. Uh, that's not the best example. Here, we'll just go look at the charts. Jose, how's that? But, you know, again, look, this was the one yesterday that, that we had. I'm going to open this back up again. Can I, I'm going to make a picture of this and make it bigger so I can really blow it up, okay? Where to enter is what I'm going to call it. Bear with me here. All right. Can everybody see this okay? So look, I, I made a just a PNG file so I can blow it up. So is, this is going to be exaggerated big. This has to be true. Pivot stop out at FIBS. No triggers above it. Right? That's in the rules. No triggers above the FIBS. Or in my rules, anyway. I mean, it could get maybe a little bit above it, but just to just to go through the rules so you can kind of see it, Jose. 
No triggers beyond the edge of fibs. Very, very, very important portion. You know, because when the triggers go past the fibs, it may break, it may not. So again, termination on all the charts, no triggers past all the charts. So that makes it a very serious top or bottom that's very obvious and very uh, sharp on the chart. And this is one right here. I mean, look, that's a pivot stop out at FIBS. Very sharp edge. Now, we also on the 13.2 chart, had one-to-ones just past the pivot stop out. So that's both charts say the same thing at the same time. You see that? So the 21.3 said it, the 13.2 had termination. And then at the same time, <clears throat> again, one of my rules is I have to have divergence on the high on the 5.1 chart. If you go through my plan and look at the picture. And then what I'm looking for is a down bar at least. So let me finish going through the rules here. Right. So what I want is entry after a reversal on the 13.2 chart with momentum at fibs and mid bands or one to ones. So basically the same areas that you would use for a trend trade, but with momentum. And, and again, look, let me copy paste this right here for you guys, because this is maybe let me do a visual here. <clears throat> Bear with me. I'm going to go to trading rules. Okay. So look, momentum trade rules. Small chart trigger strength and location relative to the 13 two small triggers and the other areas. I guess this is my trade that I have on here. And here's another example just from the rules. Um, and I think this one fits well here. Let me just open this up. Can you guys see that better? There we go. So it has to be first. Here, let me get the discord out of the way. It has to be first a great top on all charts at FIPS. Everybody cool with that? And again, if stop me dead in my tracks, this is not a speech. This is a conversation. So if you say, wait, John, right now, stop in the middle of what the hell you're doing and explain something, I don't get it, please do that, okay? You're not interrupting, you're not doing anything bad, you're not ruining anybody else's time in the room. You guys have to be selfish. If you have a question, ask it, okay? So rule number one, Good top on all charts. I think this qualifies. What do you guys say? We also have divergence on the 13.2, divergence and lower divergence on the 5.1. We have market flow, stranded buyers and signals from the edge of fibs. This is the mother load of all three charts at the exact same time saying party's over. All right, now it's your turn. Say yes or no, you understand. All right, so look, and again, there's the good side and the bad side of this trade, okay? The good side is shown here, which is, you know, again, look, do you see this little white sideways bar that goes across right here? This is the 13.2 reversal bar marker, the same reversal bar marker that's on a 13.2 chart. I have it superimposed on my 5-1 chart so I can see where it's at for this rule, okay? So the rule says, and again, let me go back to the rules just for grins and giggles. 
the rules say you have to have at least a 13-2 bar true. And the small triggers have to be crossed in the right direction beyond the area you're trying to sell. So it looks like this. Good top, good top, good top. At least a 13-2 down bar, which trust me, that will save your ass nine ways to Sunday. The small triggers have to be vertical going down. That's the momentum trade, guys. The momentum look. These small triggers on the 5-1 chart have to be physically below the lines and going straight freaking down. Everybody got it? The more the bars are below the triggers instead of inside the triggers is even better. But the idea is that you're going to sell right here anticipating because of the great top and the great momentum that it's not going to pull all the way back up here and give you a trend trade. It will give you a trend trade eventually. But this is the first trade because you bought fibs and you can read your charts and you know that you had a really good top in place. Do you guys understand it? Now, you guys are all going to start doing this and screw it up for the next month or two. So don't feel bad if you mess it up. It's Once you see it, it's so freaking obvious and so easy, you're going to be like, damn. Now, what's the downside? Well, the downside is you could take a loser. <laughs> right? So you may have to risk a couple extra points to kind of put your stop out of the way in case they do make it back to a high volume area, which... Again, <clears throat> can I give you, did you guys, I, I put two videos in the room yesterday. I want to digress for two seconds. In the self-training section, there's two videos that I recorded um, on August 25th, specifically, and September 26th. I'm not sure if you guys have watched this, but this first one goes through some really intricate trigger line reading lessons, which I think you guys will find very, very helpful. The second one spends a lot of time with divergence and when it's good or bad or helpful or hurtful. So these are two really great supplemental lessons which I think you will find very advantageous if you haven't watched them spend some time watching those um, now I'm going to show you a picture from one of those videos and I want you to before we go any further we'll go look at the market and all that stuff but look you guys are not here to watch me analyze the market you're here to pick up something so you can go do this on your own right so look, this is a picture from, and again, I did this in the video. It's from 2015. So this is an old, old, old picture. Um, but the theory is still the same. Um, whenever the bodies of the bars, I'm not using it, Jose. It's just there. So I know when we make a down bar on the 13-2 chart. I'm not using it for anything. It's just there. You could just look at your 13-2 chart and go, oh, we had a down bar. Same thing. <laughs> All right. So look, the bodies of the bars using our linear regression calculation trigger lines. When the bodies of the bar are completely below the small triggers, the market has a tendency to keep going. Everybody got that, right? The more momentum and the more the bars are below, the more likely it is to keep going. When the bodies of the bars start to get inside and above the small triggers, we start to lose momentum and the market usually puts in a retracement. When the bodies of the bars are completely above, it usually keeps pushing up. When the bodies of the bars are below, 
The market usually keeps pushing down. It's a very simple concept. And the reason I brought that out, you can go watch that video, but that's this concept right here. If you're going to do these momentum trades, I want you to really think about these momentum trades for a second. Before you go off and jump in at an area, ask yourself on these two charts, where are the bodies of the bars relative to the small triggers? Would you guys agree that the bodies of the bars are completely below the small triggers and completely below the small triggers? Just kind of a visual clue that you've got lots of strength and lots of momentum and that the top, most importantly, was good. The momentum is high. That's when you can take a momentum style trade. Does that make sense? If the triggers aren't, you know, if the bars aren't making this strong, super strong push to get way below the small triggers, then you usually don't get that trade to work. All right, can we move on? You guys ready to move on? Anyway, um, so going back to what we were saying prior to this, in my opinion, and this is the way I do it. You can do it as you see fit. But I like to draw boxes on the key areas because what it does is it allows me to go back and study what the hell happened after that. Right? So, again, circles are pretty easy, but I, I want boxes where major areas are, if, that's, if that makes sense. So... Again, like right now, we're kind of 50-50-ish in here, right? So what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to go, you know, that's my 21-3 chart. Let's go back and see those boxes on the 13-2 chart. And let's see if there's anything that just, you know, kind of jumps out at us. Fair enough? Because, again, whenever you can have a termination on both, no. Everybody give me a yes or no. These boxes were from terminations on a 21-3 chart. They are now superimposed on a 13-2 chart. Just so you know where they're from, okay? So if you have a termination on a 21-3, and you have a termination on a 13.2, guess what happens? Now you start thinking about trend trades to the long side. Watch, here, watch. Let me make your life really easy. Do you see the trend trades to the long side now? When you're no longer scared of the red line in your way because you've had double large chart termination bottoms or tops, this is where a lot of fear happens with new users. They're going to go, John, I can't take a trade there, and I can't take a trade there, and I can't take a trade there because there might be a line in my way. Have you ever said that? Oh, it's into a line. I might not be able to do that one. Now, we're going to circle back. And again, I want you guys to see where this stuff is in the education because it's literally the most important stuff you guys can go through, okay? In the self-training channel, you better go back and watch this video again. Tops and bottoms. Trading the edges. The quality of the top or bottom combined with strong trigger lines is going to enable you to trade into the line that terrifies you when you get started. I know it's going to be tough to work your way through this because it is for everybody, so don't feel bad. Okay, But this is one of your shortcomings. We had pivot stop out on the 21-3 chart. We had pivot stop out 
on the 13-2 chart. We have strong triggers. Now watch. I'm going to do one more thing. All right. Can you guys see that? Now, these look like trend trades to you historically, don't they? When I put the templates back on, Second. Good evening. It's taking longer than I anticipated. All right. When I put the templates back on, you can see how, you know, a newer user would make a case that there's things in the way. Does that make, I mean, maybe the first one, okay. But then you get to the second one and you're like, there's no way I could do that. The third one, you would say, oh my God, we hit a fib. I can't go long. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's really, really, really important that you start to build this confidence in a good bottom and wide triggers. You're probably going to get to, you know, the farther away area is the way to think about it. And then that way, as long as the triggers remain strong, you usually keep going long. Now, you remember what I said about location of triggers, price bars and triggers? Just for grins and giggles, tell me where the bars are located relative to the small triggers here after a termination condition. I'd say those bars are quite a bit above the small triggers that are really wide. That's the first most favorable spot for a trend trade. And look, you're going to see this pattern repeat itself a lot. And that's why I did that long extended trigger line video. Remember we said in that picture that when the bars are above, you're going to get a shallower retracement. And then when the bodies of the bars are inside, guess what happens? You get a pullback inside the large triggers to repeat process. You can go back and study this pattern all day long, but it's almost always the same. Termination, pullback to the first small triggers, Extended run, pull back to the large triggers. Now, some would say, we've been doing this for 25 years. I want you to see our trade setup from 2004. The simplicity of it. Now, this is literally from 2004. We had automated fibs. We didn't have automated diversions. You had to visually see your own divergence, but now you have a negative number. So life is easy, right? Our whole entire trading plan was this. Think about it. Hit a fib with divergence, wait for the triggers to roll, sell a pullback to the triggers. Isn't that the same trade I'm telling you guys is in my plan right now? A good top, first momentum, buy or sell the first pullback. Same trade, nothing's changed. All right, now I'm going to put this all back together again. <clears throat> and again, look, I know you guys want to look at live markets, that's fine, but you have to have a plan for what you're going to do with the live market or else, you know, you're just, you're, you're going to fumble around. And if you're new and you don't know how to read your charts and say, that's a good top. We're going down to, you know, back down to here for now, and then we'll see what happens. You have to have these uh, targets in place. Visual targets. Now, will it stop down here? That's the question. And I don't know. I mean, that's a good target for short trades if you're short. 
not necessarily a go long spot yet, right? We'd have to have a lot of work to be done. But again, look, I think everybody can get on board with this, correct? Divergence from a fib. Eventually, the triggers roll over. Ideally, it would have been nice to go short right there, which it doesn't pull back. And then as we get to fibs, the triggers get below the fibs, and the read is we're going to keep going lower to the next support, which we just hit. Can I ask you guys a question? Look, just look, I've been out of the education for a bit. Mark's been doing it. Is the 5 1 chart too damn fast for you guys sometimes? And does slowing it down, looking at a bigger chart, make you feel a little more relaxed? I'm just curious. I just I wanted some feedback on this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we have a lot of clients that just trade larger charts. And, you know, you can still have a 5-1 chart. A 5-1 chart is still necessary. You can't get rid of it. Fine-tuning your entries, managing your positions. Those are all things that, you know, are very, very, very 5-1 dependent. So, you know, but I think unless you're in a position where you're either trying to get in or out of a trade, you don't really need the 5-1 as much as you think you do. And I think that's where a lot of you guys um, have some shortcomings. It's not messy. You know what it is? You're staring at it when you're not supposed to stare at it. And that's why it's messy. If you only look at it after a good top or a good bottom or the triggers are really strong trending, then it's no longer messy. <laughs> that's the problem. It's messy everywhere else except for when you need it. And I think that's the hard part for new people is because they think, oh, I got to stare at this Action Jackson chart and keep myself busy. Uh, you guys give me two seconds. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. All right, so can everybody hear me okay? Just quick mic check, double check. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do, and again, look, this is where drawing the boxes is going to be very advantageous for you guys because it's going to give you, you know, again, look, it's going to give you opportunities to go in and say, you know, these are areas that potentially could have been trades or not, and we'll go back and look at them. So, again, look, I drew all the areas on the 21.3 chart. I'm getting rid of the 21.3 chart. No more 21.3 chart today. 
Oh, we may look at it again. But <clears throat> now we're going to look at 13-2 chart. And, you know, it's only 945. we got plenty of time, guys. We're going to have so much work done today. You guys are going to love it. All right. So, you know what? Let me save my workspace. God forbid it goes down and I lose all my boxes. Uh, workspace. Save workspace. Okay. All right, so again, look, I just want to double check the boxes that we made this morning on the 21.3 chart and then see if there's any additionals that we needed to add um, you know, today. Here's today because of the 13.2 chart. So look, if we have to add them because of the 13.2 chart, I'll make them yellow. Fair enough. That way we'll know that they came from just the 13-2 chart. All right, so we're going to go forward. And obviously, if the 21-3 and the 13-2 say it's good, then that's good. All right, I'm just going through. Again, I think that's a really good box. I'll just put one on there. I think this is a really good box on this chart, right? If I was only looking at a 13-2 chart, that's a super duper box to me. Everybody agree with that? I mean, that's a pivot stop out, lots of fibs, beautiful thing. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. So what are we doing? We're doing history right now, right guys? We're just going back and we're saying to ourselves, you know, we want to look at key termination areas 21.3 and or 13.2 that's not a bad spot and that's not too bad of a spot I had a little 50-50 we'll go over a 50-50 and what it is but again this is 21.3 bottom This is only 8.45. This is 9 o'clock. I think that this is a really good top as far as both 21.3 and 13.2. All right. That's the 21.3 area I was looking at. And again, I think, you know, again, look, I drew this last box on there to say what was happening at the time we got to this spot. What do you guys think? Triggers are a little too strong to think it's going to be a top, don't you think? I think so. Triggers are way too strong for it to be a top. So the market goes up, and lo and behold, pivot stop out at the edge of Fibs for a real top. And we are back to live, guys. So I think that this also qualifies as a good bottom. Everybody agree? Lots of freaking blue lines, divergence, trigger lines roll. So look, go back to 2004 and make your life simple. Hit a fib with divergence, buy or sell a pullback to the triggers. Hit a fib with price, have a divergence, buy or sell a pullback to the triggers after they roll over. Can you guys do that? Look at it live. Here it is live. Fibs with divergence. Buy a pullback to the triggers. And in 2004, the mid band was our first target. Does it still work? Fib, trigger roll, mid band. What were you guys doing 18 years ago? Because I know what I was doing. You'll get more comfortable with it after a couple more years, I promise. I swear. <laughs> All right. Nine to five. 
All right, so look, let's go through now, because now you guys really want to see the 5-1 chart, don't you? Can we go back again? You, look, this is the type of work that you guys need to do as far as studying your charts. If you're not doing this, you know, I think this is a really, 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 really good uh, study lesson and how to study your charts more than anything else. Um, so I'm going to get to the beginning of the day. All right. We're just going to go forward. Everybody okay with this? Now, this is my 5-1 chart, and on my 5-1 chart, I have a 21-3 small trigger. You don't have to have this. If you want one, I can give you the template. If you want this template, I can give it to you for Ninja Trader 7. Just so you know how to do it yourself, because I think self-sufficiency is a really cool thing. Just in case, I know most, 97% of men aren't going to read directions and like half the women don't either, so don't feel bad. But just in case you do get the urge to read directions, there are directions on how to change your charts and add synthetic trigger lines and fi synthetic fibs and markers and all sorts of stuff just in case we have templates for it that plot the things but just in case all right midnight no that's not even midnight that's midnight okay so what are we looking for guys we're looking for the boxes that we drew Okay. Where the hell are the boxes? Oh, man. Hang on. I did all that freaking work. Hang on. It says all charts. Hang on. It's a 21-3 small trigger line. So look, this is the last box that we drew at the low. And again, remember the reason we drew this box is what? Why did we draw this box? We didn't draw it because of a 5-1 chart. We drew it because we got to 5-1. Fibs, triggers are weak. We had divergence, triggers are rolling over. Everybody okay with that? Why the box is there? Now, here's where opportunity presents itself. Okay, so again, you know, my part of the plan, momentum style, and again, this isn't the best momentum look, but again, you get the bottom first. And then traditionally, you know, this isn't good because you're trading into resistance. So it's a lot tougher. But I want you to kind of see the way it works. Divergence on all the charts. Everything rolls. We're going to pull back. And, you know, these are the areas right here where the market is starting to support. And, again, it's hard to say that there's a trade there. I would be hard pressed to say there's a trade there unless there's a high volume area. Which again is in our plan. I don't mean to throw another monkey wrench at you guys, but again, look, the high volume area trade is the exact same trade as the momentum style trade. It just uses the high volume line. So look, here's the example. Do you guys understand this trade? You guys have seen this, right? Where you get a good bottom and then you use the green line to go long. Everybody understands that? So you get two choices at a top or bottom, or I do at least. 
in my trading plan. I can do either a high volume area if the high volume line is at the same spot, or I can use the momentum entry. Tell me I'm, if I'm not confusing you guys. It's the same top or bottom and the same preconditions first. It's just one of two entries. It's either a high volume area entry, if I get a line with the triggers going up, or a momentum entry at an area with the small triggers going up. It's one or the other. Sometimes it's both at the same time. Does that make sense? So it's either or depending on the quality of the bottom. Well, you don't have to understand anything about it except one thing. If you have a good bottom, buy the green line if the triggers are going up, Bobby. That's all you need to know. It's the quality of the bottom that makes that green line work. So watch, we already talked about the quality of the bottom. Since it actually had, I know we had news, but since it actually happened, look, let me just show it to you. This is the same bottom we were just talking about. I'm just gonna blow it up for you. Again, quality of the bottom. This is your high volume line right here, Bobby, to buy. News at 10 o'clock. News. Yeah, this looks identical to this, doesn't it? To the, the plan picture that we had. And that's all you want. You want a good bottom on all your charts, and then you want a high volume line or a momentum trade. So the high volume line came in right there. Realistically, for newer users, you guys are going to do a trade over here. Would you guys agree with that? More so at the large triggers and blue fibs going up. That's your traditional trend trade. Now, what's the difference? So if you get the bottom and a high volume line or momentum style trade, you get this first, I don't know, six or seven points. And if you get the second one, you still make a bunch of money. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, look, as you, you know, I'm trying to give you some where you're going to be laters, if you will. All right, let's go back and find our last boxes and let's see if we can ascertain where the first opportunities could be. So again, we had, you know, again, you have to keep in mind because we drew a green box on the 21.3 terminations and a yellow box on the 13.2 terminations. That adds a lot more power to what we're doing, doesn't it? It's multiple chart termination. Now, could you have gone long to get there? Hell yeah, I hope you did. But once we get there, that's where long trades stop. And then, you know, again, is this your momentum trade? This might be a little bit of a tough one. The trade would have been better over here. And if you remember what I said, remember the reason why I said it. Price bars completely below. If you get a quick pullback, you're going to have a better chance of winning that trade. As it goes too far, selling a pullback at, you know, above the triggers is not quite as beneficial. It worked, but. Mm hmm. All right. So let's go back and let's take a look again. You know, again, I think this was just trend trade down stuff right here. And again, I personally like the 21.3 triggers on there. I find that, you know, again, look, this is a trend trade short, traditional right out of the book. 
and then you get a second divergence and they stop out the high and you get a second trend trade short low. Sometimes you have to do a trade twice, guys. Now, because this was a termination spot for us on multiple charts, here, I'll get rid of one of the boxes. This is also a pattern that I have found very beneficial. This is basically a pullback to your 21, three small triggers when they roll down. So as termination for lots of reasons on lots of charts, the momentum trade would have happened right here, but you probably didn't get a fill. So you had to wait for a trend trade. All right, let's go back and find other boxes and circles. Again, I think this one's pretty easy. You guys tell me if I'm off base on this, but everything's going up really, really, really strong. Pull back to mid bands and fibs. It goes up. I don't think that one's too terribly difficult. All right. I posted this one in the room before the class. Right there. Did you guys see that one? Here's what it looked like as it was happening. Let me see, I have a picture somewhere. So this is what it looked like as it was happening. So we had a good bottom, the triggers were going up, pull back to the mid bands, fibs, triggers, everything going up. And then there was a high volume line and a signal. So yes, that was pretty much the mother load every chart on the planet and it went up to like 64 or 65. So it was a huge run. But again, this is all you're looking for, guys. Everything on every chart to be in the same direction after a good top or a good bottom. All right, so here's your good bottom again. And again, you're going to see this a lot. It's going to go up, make a 13-2 bar, pull back, and then you're going to get another move. Notice how, you know, again, there's some trend trades in here, but the trend trades are really few and far between, aren't they? I mean, you really, especially, I mean, it's, it was so volatile. It's just absolutely insane. But the trend trades are few and far between when, uh, when you're looking at the 5-1 chart. You're only going to get five, six, seven, eight trades a day. I mean, obviously it depends on the volatility, but 90% of your time is waiting and then tops and bottoms. All right, so watch. We'll watch the live market now and see where we're at together. You guys wanna watch the live market now and we'll talk about it as we go. All right, one chart. Let me get all my charts back in the alignment here and then we'll. It's the same damn thing. Our software is the same on both. NinjaTrader 7 doesn't crash. So depends if you like wrestling with your software, the Ninja 8's for you. If you don't like wrestling with your software, Ninja 7. All new users should use Ninja 7 period while you're learning because, you know, until you actually uh, start making money and doing okay with the software, it's just too damn frustrating to have crashes. 
Yeah. You know, I built a brand new dedicated computer um, yesterday. I finished it last night. And I only loaded Windows 7. I mean, 7. Windows 11 and Ninja Trader 8. I didn't load OneDrive. I didn't load Microsoft. I didn't load anything. Literally the most raw, teeniest, tiniest Windows that you could load. And it's still running since 10 o'clock last night and hadn't crashed, knock on wood, yet. Which is interesting. All right. So, let's take a look at our charts. And again, this is the type of spot right here where you're asking yourself the question, right? Do we have the opportunity for the market to go up on all three of our charts? I say all three. So the 21.3 chart is up. The 13.2 chart is up. And then we have mid bands and fibs right here. Now, the only problem with this trade is what? You're going to have to manage it. Right? Where does the management come in? I can tell you before it ever even happens. Right? If you go long, when you hit one to ones with second divergence potential, you're going to have to reduce your risk at least. At least that area has to break to get to 72. So again, what are the odds we make it to 72? Pretty decent. I mean, again, we'll go look at management in a minute, but the odds are pretty decent we make it up there. What do you guys think? At least based on a 21.3 chart. All right. Now, if you got in and you manage your position, that's okay. There are more trades coming. If you got in and you stayed in and then now, you, you know, again, look, management is one of those things where you may say, I'll hang on for a minute, but... Claire, when you say, is there a continue on 23 at FIB support dots? I don't know what that means. Is there a continue on 23 at FIB support dots? I'm missing that. <laughs> All right. If you guys have trades, put them in. All right, Gary, let's see what you got. Let's go through your chart. Let's go through your checklist. So number one, you had a good bottom. Yes. Number two, odds favorable triggers on the 13-2 chart. Yes. No termination conditions, and you bought Fibonacci support. Okay. And you took what? 25 points on half and 45 points on the other half, just about. Very nice. Very nicely done. Now, obviously, we have a batshit crazy market because it's very volatile. So you guys recognize that, right? That's a professional day trading term. All right. 
So read it out loud to me, guys. Fib support should hold, give or take. Now we've put ourselves into a situation where, you know, it could be choppy, but we've had termination at the top. Can we agree with that? So FIB support pretty much going to hold. Now we've got pivot stop out. The minute we get back below that pink line, no more long trades because it's going to probably go down a little deeper. I'm not going to go down. All right, let's take a look at your trade. Why would I get mad at you for making a trade? It's your money. Look, all we do is we have Fibonacci software, and our job is to teach you how to read it, and that's it. It's not, look, we're not here to cook your dinner, wash your car, take your wife out to dinner. It's none of our business. We make software, we teach you how to read it, and your business is your business. So if you wanna do a trade because you say this fits my plan, don't ever feel bad about it. I mean, it's a winner too, which is nice, but you know, the only thing we wanna be able to do for you guys is help you if you're doing something wrong. Does that make sense? If you're reading the software wrong or your interpretation of something is wrong, we wanna be able to help you. But this is not a group effort, guys. It's you versus you. The software has been the same for so long. It's not you versus the software. It's not you versus the market. It's you versus you. You're the one is doing battle against yourself. Yeah, I mean, the software rocks. There's nothing wrong, you know. There's no doubt about that. The software is good. Great. We're in some chop now. So watch. Unless there's a good reason to look at a 5-1 chart, don't. Now, I want you to give me a bias, okay? Looking at your 21.3 chart, the bias can only be, well, damn it, it already went, but. <laughs> yeah, so it's either longs or nothing, at least. Can we say that, just in all fairness? You're not going short. It's either longs or nothing. I know it's volatile. That's why I really like a 21.3 chart when it's volatile. When it's not volatile, the 21.3 chart's frustrating because it takes forever and a day to materialize. <laughs> right? You know, I immediately regretted that the moment I said it. <laughs> the brain to mouth filter is still broken after all these years. All right, I want you guys to assess the trigger line strength right here. Is it gonna be a top or no? You have to pick yes or no. Is it going to be a good top with that much trigger line strength? The answer is no, not yet. I'll just give it to you. Now, you probably are not going long anymore. But it's not going down as far as you think it will yet. Now, we can start to watch the 13.2 chart and see if we can have any other thoughts. So, all right, let's add to the 21.3 chart. What does the 13.2 say? Triggers are too good. So we should go up, right? All right. 
50 50. Right. I think it's more like 100 freaking percent with triggers that strong, but I may be wrong. It's 100 percent up. I don't know if it's going to go up or not, but. You know, Claire, 50 50, you know, again, look, I think Mark puts that term out there a lot. Um, A 50-50 is, you know, here's an example of a 50-50 that causes a lot of issues, okay? Just for grins and giggles, okay? The prevailing trend on the 13-2 chart is down. Can we agree with that? The prevailing trend is down. So when we get a 50-50, meaning you know, small triggers above and large triggers below, the prevailing trend has a lot to do with what might happen next. The other thing that you guys now have in your arsenal, which you may not have had earlier this week, is what does the 21.3 chart say? Because if this is, you know, pivot stop out or fibs or mid bands on the 21.3 chart, then it's not even a 50-50 breakout. It's a 100% don't go long. So you can, you know, you can look at these kind of split triggers where they're straddling a fib, you know, one above, one below, and then go read your 21-3 chart for the, you know, for a little extra confirmation. Now we're at fibs, obviously, so we have to respect that. If we weren't at FIBS, it'd be a different scenario. But I think that the prevailing trend is up. The prevailing triggers are strong. Probably still, you know, wouldn't take short trades yet. How's that? Is that a better way of saying it? That's right. Now, when both of these two charts agree, we can go look at a 5-1 chart. Does that sound fair? When both of these charts say, hey, look, there's something's going to happen, either at a FIB, mid-band, or whatever, then we can look at a 5-1 chart and find an entry. Right now, we're kind of in no man's land here at the moment. No man with a little lean higher, but into fib, so not touching any of it. All right, so this is a really, really good time. Number one, we could take a short break if you want, but questions. Do you guys have any questions or anything that you guys would like to go through? Gary, you've done two trades. You're up 2000 bucks. Awesome. Congratulations. You know, there's something to be said for bigger trades in there, Gary. Less work, more money. I want you guys to understand something. I'm going to pull up the user guide for just a second. because it's written in there and I want to make sure that you guys um, I'm going to copy paste this page on here format the T3 Fibs Pro Trader and here I'll show you so look to turn on small one to ones you're just going to format the pro trader, double click on it if you will. And then where it says plot small one to ones, just make it true. All right, large chart trading. 
Swing trading, position trading, stock trading, 21-3 chart trading, whatever you want, okay? I wrote this in here very, very specifically for you guys. Before you start doing larger time frame charts, you need more reps with smaller charts because you have to see something you know, a thousand times before it really sticks. Would you guys agree with that? I mean, you really need to see the same thing over and over and over and over and over to have enough life lessons with it for it to be something that's yours. Um, and this is why, you know, I teach like a momentum trade and then everybody's doing momentum trades on Monday, getting their ass wiped out. So, you know, spend time with it first before you start trading real money on it. Um, the 13251 chart combination can be used, you know, you see somebody who is trading a 345213 Nasdaq. That's perfectly acceptable. But they learn the patterns on the smaller charts first so you can get 10 or 15 20 reps a day. And then once you get 10 20 30 40 reps in, then you're able to actually take those patterns and put them on a bigger chart. So I don't want you guys to go off and just go, you know, batshit crazy building bigger charts and only doing bigger charts. I want you to do a lot of practice on the 13251. And then if you want to add in one more chart, cool. And then if you want to add in a little bigger chart, cool. There's nothing wrong with bigger charts. I'm totally for them. Okay, guys. Once you've completed enough reps with the smaller charts to be successful. So I want you to do trend trade, trend trade, trend trade, trend trade, trend trade, nine ways to Sunday until you're successful with it. And then you can go do bigger charts. All right. George T. 100% perfect trend trade. This is, what is that? Natural gas? Natural gas futures. Have you guys ever seen natural gas futures? Well, now you have, look at it. Diversions from Feb, strong triggers, sell a pullback to the mid band and large triggers, and he went short and making money. What do you guys think? Divergence from fibs on a 21.3 chart. Strong triggers, strong triggers. Divergence from fibs on the 13.2, strong triggers. I mean, that's literally straight up right out of the user guide, isn't it? Very nice trade, George. And then this is the after. Awesome. So look, this is what I was telling you guys about looking at different markets or different time frames. It doesn't matter if you have this same pattern. Divergence from Fib, strong triggers, you're going to win, you know, more than you lose most of the time. Sometimes they're going to get you and that's just the way life goes, but it's this consistency of the same thing over and over and over and over again. Very nicely done, George. All right, let's take a couple minute break. We did finally roll up there, didn't we? We'll take a couple minute break. And if you guys have questions, please put them in. Look, I'm here to help you do anything that you guys want to go through. Whatever it is. George, that was the same exact trade right here, basically on the 13.2 chart, wasn't it? That you did on natural gas, little pivot stop out entry, down to the fibs. Same exact trade that he just did. 
You guys see it? It's literally the exact same trait. Which is always cool. And that's the nice thing about these dynamic Rinko bars. It doesn't matter what the market is. The bar structure makes it all the same. It eliminates the individuality of the market, if you will. All right. As we get to fibs here, I'm going to take a quick couple minute break. Post in any pictures, comments, concerns, anything you guys want to go through, and we'll get through them.
many guys. Um, <clears throat> this is out of the user guide. You know, the first section where we talk about trigger loans. And again, look, I think you guys are going to be very comfortable with strong trigger lines up or down. I don't think that's where anybody has any issues. Um, <clears throat> the other one that I think a lot of people have issues with, you know, and again, I think it's some of its terminology where the small triggers get in between the large triggers and you guys instantly default to anything can happen. And again, it's not anything can happen. It's anything can happen, but it's going up. You understand what I'm saying? As long as they're going up still, you can still keep taking long trades until you get to an area that, you know, either a termination condition or some type of area. Um, I see this with Mark in the room a lot. A lot of people go, I'm not going long because the triggers are inside of each other. It's like, really? So you can keep going long if they're inside of each other as long as the small charts support you taking long trades. Um, now, this is one that is a very, very common thing. Um, and you're going to see this, I mean, a lot. You're going to get the first push up. And whenever the first push up is really strong, usually you're going to get a retracement, then you're going to get another push up. And the second time, when you reach a termination condition, if the small triggers are physically below the large triggers, you're going to have a much better top. Does that make sense? And again, I, mean, I know we're kind of breaking through here, so it doesn't matter, but <clears throat> you're going to see the same pattern happen like a 21.3 chart. Remember we said it was going up so strong that it's probably, you know, not that it can't go down short term, and it did. But because the first push up was so strong, there's usually a second push. And again, you guys are familiar with this, right? Mid bands and fibs with the large trigger still going up to get the next push. Anyway, the, you know, this mid band and fibs happens all the time. And you guys, again, it's, it's a, if you did go short, it's a don't go short anymore situation. Now, when you look at the small chart, you get the same thing, right? You get fibs on your 13.2 chart, which tell you to stop. You get double divergence on your larger chart, which tells you to stop. So we have a good bottom. And, you know, again, was there an easy long trade coming out of the bottom? Not really. You know, my rules say you have to make at least a 13.2 up bar first. Then you can buy a pullback. And realistically, it didn't get deep enough. Did you guys miss a long trade? I mean, there might have been an aggressive one over here, but that, that one's a little tougher. Per my rules, I have to have at least a 13.2 up bar. And that's why this marker is on this chart. Because once we start making up bars from fibs on the 13.2 chart, the likelihood is that we're going to keep going. Now, realistically, there's no freaking way I would have been filled because this would have been the entry area here. Does that make sense? There just wasn't enough of a pullback to get to a spot, unfortunately, and sometimes that's just what happens. But good bottom, strong momentum, buy a pullback. Unfortunately, it just didn't quite work out. <clears throat> Same thing on the market flow chart, right? This was your short trade, which just so happened to be a market flow signal short, if you did it coincidentally enough and then we get to fibs and then the fibs hold and then we have a high volume line there as well at the same spot we were talking about we need a pullback to and it just didn't pull back 
Same pattern, just different chart. All right, Gary. This is a checklist you put in here. Let's see what it says. Anything can happen or 50 50. As long as you have an entry area inside of favorable large triggers, odds are favorable on the eight range, no divergence on the five one. With divergence, use a market flow signal. That looks pretty much identical to mine, Gary. And of course, I peek at the 21 3 chart. Uh, let me take a peek at your picture here, pull it up. <clears throat> you know, I mean, obviously, everything retrospectively, you know, Unless there's a really good reason to wait, I personally get in at the area. Because you're just giving up money. You know, everything is so damn strong on your trigger lines that usually the white paint bar down into it creates the signal. So let's play devil's advocate here for a second on your trade. And again, look, if you wait for a signal, there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. <laughs> but look, the quality of this divergence up here, <clears throat> you know, in the chart reading section, let me pull up a picture here that's in the, uh, Look, this is in the advanced chart reading section. It's also in the management user guide. And that YouTube that I did on September 25th also goes a lot into divergence. But whenever you're looking at a divergence and you're saying, how much should I pay attention to that divergence? Where are the small triggers relative to the large triggers at the time you get that divergence is a key factor? Well, you know, location. How's this? So the position, you can see this picture, right? So the, the small trigger location relative to the large trigger in the entry area, it's so far below, this divergence doesn't really mean anything. It's like it didn't even happen. So when I look at your picture, here, let me just save it so I can blow. I always like to blow things up. Maybe I'm getting old, my eyes are getting worse, who knows, but I think it's, Again, you have to kind of say to yourself, where is this divergence happening from? What are the triggers doing and how far above the support are my triggers? So you're kind of letting that divergence have a lot of power, but I don't know, you know, as far as trigger line location and area and everything else, I don't think it has any power. Does that make sense? Triggers are so far up and so strong and the area is so good that I think you just have to, I don't think you have to wait for a signal. Now, you can also do the same thing over here on your eight range triggers. The quality of the eight range triggers are so astronomically ridiculously up that I think it's probably more advantageous to get in on the way down than the way up. Because not only did you get a signal, but you got three or four ticks worse than where the signal was. So you you paid eight, nine, 10, 11 ticks. That's a lot of ticks on the S&P. You know, you're looking at $125, $150 difference on the entry. 
<clears throat> then you also have to go a little bit further, I think, and say, all right, so where the if I get in on the way down, where do I have to put my stop to be on the other side of stuff? I was going to say something else, but... <laughs> Right, so realistically, you put your stop below the fib and below the 13.2 reversal bar marker and hope for the best. And then it gets you in on the way down, not too, you know, a lot less stop than what you had probably initially. Because, again, quality of the triggers, location of the triggers, quality of the where can I hide my stop area as well. So I know that's a lot of analysis on one thing, but. And again, maybe, you know, then maybe that allows you to hold through that and then you got to get out anyway, but they're bucking Bronco in there today. Anyway, it's not that you ignore divergence, it's you're trying to gauge where did it come from? What are the triggers doing? Should I give it any credence or not? Hopefully that's, ho hopefully I explained that well enough. You want to know something that's interesting? I've been watching this, and I can't say it's 100% for certain yet, but I'm pretty damn sure. <laughs> Whenever the large triggers get below the 21.3 triggers, you see what I'm saying? These trend trades get run the freaking frack over. You can go back and study trend trades if you do this 21.3 trigger trick. When you're on the correct side of them, it's easy peasy. So look at the large triggers. Large triggers are below the 21.3 easy short. Inside at least, very easy. Once they get below, easy or short. I have found that trend trades on the wrong side of those triggers have a tendency to get run over. I mean, and not every time, but a lot of times. You guys are going to have to go research that. <clears throat> All right, so let me ask you guys a question. Quick, 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 quick. Can I go short right here with one of my momentum trades or not? It's a trick question. I'm just wanting to see if everybody paid attention or not. Nobody's going to answer. The answer is no. I just wanted to see if you guys watch this. That's right, Elvis. Nicely done. No momentum trades from tops or bottoms unless you actually have a good top or bottom. You know how many people are going to try that trade and lose their ass on Monday without a perfect top or bottom? Like 40 people. So don't do it if you don't have a wall of fibs and everything perfect. And again, let me go back to... Right. There was this was the picture we were looking at earlier. This is the look where you can get away with being first to sell a little pullback. A great chop top on all your charts, then you're going to get away with it if the small triggers are vertical. Everybody cool? Here's your 213 chart. Just just for grins and giggles. Just to see a 21.3 chart. Anybody see short trades? No short trades. <laughs> hell, not just no, but hell no. That's the, we're going up pretty much 
for a certain look, isn't it? We break through a fib. You know, look, it's a pattern. You guys have seen it more than once now. We break through a fib, pull back to the fibs where the trigger's going up, the market goes up, the triggers are strong, maybe in a fib hold, fibs break, we're going up again. Now, this is where I also like the 21.3 chart. It tells me where we're going. We're going to 94.75, right? Maybe. I mean, it doesn't have to, but it looks like that's where we're headed. Anyway, up or nothing is what that chart says. Now we run into a little bit of an issue. What are we going to do here, guys? Is it going to keep going up? <clears throat> you know, I can't, there's no control I have, Elvis, over whether your uh, video is coming in 100% clear or not. There's literally nothing I can do. It says it's broadcasting at 1080 and 60 frames a second. Let's see. I'm broadcasting at 1080 and 60 frames a second. Uh, do you have a 4K monitor, Elvis? No. Perhaps it's time to check the prescription. Um, just saying. <clears throat> I do. 94, 75 ish, whatever it is. That's what this fib is up here, NG. This synthetic fib is from the 21.3 chart. You guys realize, look, the synthetic fibs only plot one support, one resistance from the other time frame. And they don't extend out to the right. So the fib that's on the 13.2 chart, the native time frame chart, will extend out to the right. But synthetic fibs, there's only one support, one resistance. You know, the one that's resistance above us and support below us. And there's, they still go to the right, but they don't extend to the right like fibs on a regular chart. But they're still there. So look, on the 21.3 chart, you can see them. So the native fibs on the 21.3 chart are right here. This is the 13.2 fib. It's still there, it's just, you know, they don't extend to the right because it's a plot. So when you look at the 13.2 chart, these are 21.3 fibs, and I know they're 21.3 because they're wider. I made them like a number eight width. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys, it's your room. Questions, comments, concerns, things you guys want to go through. Ultimately, look, good tops or bottoms. First momentum trade, if you want to add that into your plan. If not, it's trend trade. That's all the plan is, guys. That's all my plan is. Good tops or bottoms, 
First momentum trade if we get an opportunity. Trend trade if not. So I don't want this to sound complicated. It's not complicated. It's more a function of where do I get in and when do I manage my position. First of all, there's no such thing as we in trading, Jose. It's you. And when you say triggers, that's an ambiguous word. Which triggers are you talking about? Now, are you talking about the rules in my plan? The only mention of triggers in the 13.2 in my plan is that they are not beyond the top or bottom. If you wait for them to roll, it's too damn late most of the time. I mean, they do roll usually after you get a nut bar or two, but. All right, George T, that's your trade. You did a natural gas to the short side, but to the long side. Same trade. <clears throat> the trick is, and again, just to Jose, make sure that we're on the same page here. Really, 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 really good top or bottom is the most important thing, okay? If you get a perfect top or bottom, you can pretty much just go short and hang on for dear life and things usually work out. Now, trying to put a rule in place like wait for very strong momentum on your small triggers on your 5-1 chart. That's the trigger line that you're watching. So it's areas with no triggers beyond Jose and then super strong down vertical triggers on the 5-1 chart. Bruce, the number one thing that you're going to be looking for first everything, is this one. This is the easiest one first. A very, very, very good top or bottom. And then the small triggers rolling at, off of the top or bottom and getting in at that green line or magenta line at the top. That's the first one that you're going to be doing. You don't have to read all the bars and all. All you need to know is if. So look, I want to make sure, that Bruce, that we don't go too far on this without. Um, and I put this in, in the market flow section in here specifically for a reason, okay? The only time you're supposed to look at the market flow is when you have a trend trade that you're looking for an entry on and you need a signal. Or after a top or bottom is true. All, you know, it's kind of like watching your 5-1 chart 
90% of the time you don't need it, but only if you're at the right spot with the right conditions, then you can look for a signal. Now you'll find additional uses for it later as you go. I mean, there's a lot of patterns that we've put in here, right? <clears throat> for example, you know, if you get a white paint bar down, just like what I was telling somebody earlier, a white paint bar down into the perfect spot generally makes a long signal. So you have to decide whether you're gonna get in on the way down because of all the chart configuration or you're gonna place an entry after a signal to the upside. Um, that's really your only choice. Are you gonna get in on the way down or are you gonna get in after a signal? And the only time you're gonna do it is when you're either at a top or a bottom or all of your trend trade rules are true. And that eliminates 99% of the bars, so you don't even have to look at them. Is that helpful? So good top, good bottom. Buy the green line and hope for the best. Or vice versa, obviously. They're horsing around here, aren't they? Trying to shake everybody out. Let me take a peek at what you did. All right, entry area. You took your first profit target. You got bumped out plus tick. All right. You know, 99 times out of 100, Jose, that's the perfect exit, and they go lower. Today, we're in a very strong trending market. We're probably going to make 94 because every chart says so. <clears throat> you know, and if you don't have the ability to say, I'm going to hang in there for dear life, then you did exactly right, Jose. <clears throat> All right, Gary, let me see what you got. Okay, good. This is for Bruce, right, Gary? So if all of your conditions are true and you have a 50-50 kind of iffy trade with divergence, then you'll wait for a signal. Bruce, save that off. That's a good little checklist. You know, when you go back, you're like, man, if I would have just bought 81 and got out at 94, I'd be rich. Have you ever said that to yourself? And you see what happens, you know, when you look at the large chart and then, you know, you start looking at the small chart and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And eventually it gets there and you're like, damn it, if I would have just relaxed and hung on. <laughs> now the question is let's say we get to 94.25 is it going to stop that's really the question alright I don't have anything else to say at the moment 
questions, comments, concerns, anything that you guys would like to go through, please feel free to put them in. I'm going to be Mike Salins for two minutes. Well, that was 94. I know there's a few more ticks in there, but that's pretty darn close. <clears throat> All right, Gary, there it is, 9475. If you were long, hold on for that. That's what you call bingo right there. <clears throat> okay. Here, let's see what you got. Neither. A one-to-one -one out of the middle of nowhere, Gary, is nothing. Think bar fight mentality. Sorry, let me, now, can you hear me? Sorry about that. Think bar fight mentality, Gary. A one-to-one -one out in the middle of nowhere all by itself is nothing. If it was at two or three time frames of fibs and lots of goodies and lots of things, then it'd be different. So, but it's not a termination on a 5-1 chart. It's just by itself. <clears throat> the fact that we have, see this one, Gary, this one's a little bit more significant because we have one-to-ones at fibs on multiple charts. So, watch what, it, let me take a picture here real quick just so we can capture it as it's happening so look we have fibs with weak triggers on the 21.3 we have fibs on the 13.2 we have one to ones and fibs on the 5-1 chart and then we have market flow short signals with divergence on the market flow chart which is a pretty damn good look to say we're going to make a top short term <clears throat> and bruce do you see this market flow over here you know that's the type of you know you'll get these types of reactions on the market flow at areas and it kind of helps confirm that you know we've got a pretty good or potential pretty good top in place right here You see this look, divergence, antenna bar, yellow bar down, followed by a white paint bar down, followed by another bar down. Mm. Gary, I have found going short on the first HVA against a strong trend usually gets its ass run over, but I'm not sure that the triggers are strong enough down to, to warrant that, but yes that's the idea if i had to draw it in it'll probably go to here and then probably down to here 
if I had to draw it in. But it'll probably go back up and test a little bit higher first, 95-ish, 94.50. They usually spike up a little bit higher. And again, it's not a short. I'm not saying go short. Look at the triggers. Yeah. The triggers are still up which makes it not a high volume short. Now, probably still gonna go down a little bit just because of some profit taking. But Anyway, this is a really good start to a potential top. How's that? Is that a good way to say it? That's a really good start to it. Now we'll see if the rest of the world sees it the same way or not. <clears throat> Put it this way. I wouldn't go long anymore at the moment until we broke through. Remember what I also said about the large triggers being below the 21.3 triggers there? Usually, like I said, 95 down to 90 is probably what we're going to end up with. And then we'll see what happens. Remember, we kind of drew that in right here. There's your 95, and then it'll probably run down to 90 real quick, and then we'll see what happens. It's just, it's just not a trade. Remember in my plan also, Jose, what's the other rule that I have about doing momentum shorts? The very first rule, other than a good top, I'm going to pull up this picture just so you guys can see it, and then we'll go look at the rules again. Because I think it's just helpful to see the rules, see the rules, see the rules, see the rules, and do it over and over and over. Not that we can't go down, but to do a really good high volume area top, you have to have the triggers roll. And to do a momentum trade, you can't have triggers beyond the edge of FIPS. <clears throat> Those lines I drew in would have been pretty good, right? Up to 95, down to 90, and then we'll see what happens. Anyway, they're messing around. Like I said, it's a really good start to a good top. Go back here and... And you don't have to catch the top to make a lot of money. You can do trend trades. And <laughs> Gary, all right. All right, let's take a look, Claire. <laughs> All right. Yesterday's class, work on the 21.3 plus today's class. Watch the video after dinner, $3,700 today. You know, today is a hell of a day, too, because the 21.3 chart was killing it, and we had enough range to really make it worthwhile. So awesome job. Uh, I guess that high volume line was good up there at 95, wasn't it? As is the fib.
<laughs> you know, don't you guys think it's pretty damn cool that the market can go that far? I mean, we went all the way from 38.19, hit fibs, hit fibs, hit fibs, hit fibs, hit fibs, hit fibs, and then obviously started break fibs, but I wrote the fibs and it still shocks the crap out of me every day how cool it is. I just want you to know that. So if you're looking at it going, damn, he called it almost the exact high. It's like, yep, it still, still amazes me and I wrote it. It's really pretty cool. I had a good run back in the 90s. <clears throat> All right, guys, questions. I'm going to go mic silence for a couple minutes unless you guys have uh, pictures or questions. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that they're bad. There's nothing wrong with them, NG. Some of our clients who had software in the early 2000s, mid 2000s still use them. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, they're better on range charts, probably, or tick charts than uh, the dynamic Renko bar charts. But, you know, again, the reason we had them initially was for divergence. And since we've automated divergence, we don't really need to look at them for divergence anymore. <clears throat> All right, Gary, let's see what happened. All right, didn't work. You know, it's just, I mean, it's not a bad trade, Gary. <clears throat> Obviously, just a little bit tough after they make that many bars up against strong small triggers. You know, it's kind of like a little overrun of a fib. I mean, if you don't do it, it goes all the way down. If you do it, you get run over. I don't think you had to risk quite that much, though, unless you had slippage. All right, guys, no questions, no another. What do you guys want to study over the weekend? Good tops, good bottoms. You know, 
look, the same things that we teach and the same videos that we have, I mean, obviously the management video, the trading the edges video, these are the two that you really have to spend a lot of time with. Um, you know, the better the top, the better the bottom, the more confidence you're going to have going the other way. You're going to review the last two days of class. Yeah. I'm hope uh, hopefully I said some smart stuff in there that sticks. <laughs> Momentum trades and replay. All right. And you know, the nice thing about the momentum trades, Kevin, is that for every momentum trade that works, the next trend trade almost always works. So you kind of get a double whammy whenever you get the first momentum trade. And then it rolls into the next trend trade for, you know, just however it works out, it works out that way. Um, the new computer is still running Ninja Trader 8 since yesterday. Now, I haven't touched it, which, you know, you don't have to necessarily touch a computer to make it crash with Ninja 8, but it, she's still running. Elvis, happy birthday this weekend. All right, guys, so look, we've moved back up into a spot. <clears throat> you know, and again, look, this area either right here you know, only one or two things going to happen. It's going to stop right here, right now, or we're going to get another push and retest the highs again. Um, <clears throat> I want you to see something. No, I don't want you to read too much there. Bruce, this is a good spot where the market flow could come in beneficial. Let's say you wanted to go short, but you weren't quite sure. We'll watch it live, okay? Let's say you wanted to go short, but you weren't quite sure if this is the spot or not. You're saying to yourself, I wonder if it's going to come up here or, oops, excuse me. Or I wonder if it's going to be right there. This is the type of area where you may say to yourself, you know, I'll let a market flow signal happen to the short side and then that'll keep me from going short at a spot I think it's going down and we'll actually, you know, and it's not a guarantee. Just because you wait for a signal short doesn't mean it's a guaranteed winner. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're in between two areas and you're like, uh, I don't know if it's going to be here or maybe it goes back up to 96 and then goes down. This is where the signal, um, here I'll get rid of the circle so you can see it. This is where the signal itself can be beneficial to kind of slowing you down a little bit. Um, also, you know, again, look. When the small triggers are going down, it's a lot easier to go short at areas. When the small triggers are going up really strong, you know, the general consensus is that we might go a little bit higher. So we're at an interesting spot. But if you go short, you're the only person who's gone short so far. Or maybe some other people have gone short, but. So it could be a good Feb area. We'll have to see. You know, as long as we stay below 96, I think we can call it a good Feb area. All right, here, I'll. 
pull the market flow chart over on this side so you guys can see. Again, if we get above 96, then you're going to have to kind of rethink the party here. <clears throat> notice how we just hit the fib on the 13.2 chart right there. And notice where the tr what the trigger line look is this time. You see the difference in the fib the first time and the fib the second time? That's a much more significantly bearish look at the same fib, but later. And, it, you know, and again, it just so happened to also be that high volume line. Which creates a little resistance for us as well. So, same fib with strong triggers up. Triggers are down a lot more here, so this fib has a better chance of holding the second time. See, and now we're, now we're in a situation where we can say to ourselves, <clears throat> we can have a good top. And then if we have a good top, then we could think about doing those momentum short trades. Much better touch of resistance the second time, wasn't it? Trigger line wise. Better touch of the high volume line the second time as well. Very good top lookish. Hmm. Ninja eight disconnected and reconnected. She's still running. Cool. Did anybody go short there? Just curious. Who did what? All right, so look, now that we've had a good top, let's just say grins and giggles. See how we had a good top, at least a 13.2 bar down. Now we should get a little bit of a pullback into this area, and then this, this is kind of where that momentum trade would happen if you were going to do it. Does that make sense? The other one was more of an HVA trade. Right, so more of an HVA with the triggers going down than momentum style trade. Now, if you notice, the next high volume area also kind of coincides with where that momentum zone comes from too. And when the market flow and your trading rules usually line up, it makes for pretty cool spots. So 91 was the high volume line, just so you know, price-wise. <clears throat> so we shouldn't get much more above there or else it's probably going to keep going up. And they'll go test the high again and mess everybody over. <clears throat> All right, guys. Questions, comments, concerns, things you guys want to go through? Anything gnawing at you? And again, if you went short at, let's just say hypothetically, 
Bruce, since you are the one on the market flow. If you went short at the high volume line, stop right above it. If you went short at the high volume line with a signal, stop right above it. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I don't know if it's going to go down or not. You know, sometimes they like to go rerun the highs and mess everybody over, and then you have to start over again, but... We'll see, we will see. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the same thing when you go back and talk about it in history as it is live. I just don't know what's going to happen next, <laughs> right? I mean, when we look up later and it's down at Fibonacci support at, you know, 3881 and you're like, damn, that's awesome. I didn't know it was going to go down there for sure. It's just... You know, the market did what it normally does and fits in the patterns and, you know, just it is what it is. And you could almost say that's a trend trade, right? I mean, both large triggers and a mid band for most all intents and purposes. Edwin, you're short at 83 and out at 88. Cope. All right, so I'm going to make a picture for you guys. And again, look, you guys, I've made 20,000 pictures over the years. But again, look, I'll draw it out for you. Fibs on 21.3 weak triggers. Divergence at Fibs on the 13.2, just a little bit past. And then... Very good market flow high, yellow white paint bar with divergence, followed by a high volume line, a high volume line, and a high volume line at three different places where you can go short. Again, how far is it gonna go? I don't know, but. That's a, that's a pretty good representation of everything that we're looking for from, you know, defining a high, defining the edges, defining high volume lines, defining trend trades slash momentum trades. Bruce, one of the other things about the market flow, if you get a white pivot paint bar into a pivot stop out, usually that's first target and you get your stop down because it'll go back up higher. That's in the market flow section, actually. A prior low with a white paint bar into it is a pretty good spot to take money. Have you guys seen that in the market flow section? Anyway, look it up. So, what does it look like in the real world? You know, again, without even having the market flow, you can see we had trouble here. And it's not that we're not going down. We're still probably going to go down. They're just going to go stop out the high before they go down again. Which they've already done. We've already stopped out 91.25. <clears> Ninety-one <throat> So we have to kind of assess, do we want to go short again above our triggers? You guys see what I'm saying about this? We've had the first little hurrah to the downside. Now, do we want to go short above our triggers? Eh, usually not. Usually they're going to get right back up here and they'll stop everybody out by a tick or two and then they'll make a decision. Break out or roll over again.
All right. Jose, entry at the area. Taking your money on the way down. Nice job. And you know, again, look, you, I'm glad you respected this area because look, a pivot stop out, you know, look, in actuality, why are they going back up there? Who knows? Uh, watch. Let me clean up my mess. Here's the bigger chart. The 21.3. For most traders on the planet that don't do what we do, this is just a little retracement to go long. Right? So, you know, they didn't get their chance to go long. They were looking for a little pullback to go long, and that's it. Now, when, you know, why did it happen? Who freaking knows? But look, when we go into our material and we talk about our trigger lines, right, in the, this is a very, 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 we've talked about it already today once, but this is a very, very common thing. Gary, watch that one-to-one -one this time. It'll be a little more powerful because there's a lot of things there on the 5-1 chart. We'll go back and look at it in a minute. But do you guys understand this? The first push-up has a lot of strength, so sometimes they go back up there and stop everybody out or take a second stab at it before they go down. It's just what they do. I don't know why, but... You know, look, we can see it. We know it happens most of the time. And again, this is why you don't get overly married to the first short after such a strong run up. Now, Gary, you see what I was talking about with that one to one, right? There's a lot more reasons right here at this one-to-one -one for it to be a termination than one that's out here in the middle of nowhere. We're talking pull back to 21.3 triggers, fibs, stop everybody out who was trying to stay short. I'm not saying it's a short signal. I'm just saying... That's a damn good spot for the market to stop and start going back down again, if it's going to. Does that make sense? What? I'm going to go all the way back to 2004. You ready? You guys are going to shit when you see it. You ready? That's a professional day trading term. Here you go. 2004. Hit a fib. Have divergence. Sell a pullback to the trigger lines. Everybody got it? Everybody say yes, you got it. Fib, divergence, sell a pullback to the trigger lines. Hope for the best. This is 2004. This is live. Fibs. Divergence. Sell the pullback to the trigger lines. Now, in two, did you shit? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Now, in 2004, it goes to the mid band. If it does, it's going to end up down here. I don't know if it will or not. It could keep going up. Who knows? But I'm just saying, it's it's literally 2004 all over again. And again, this is why I think it's cool for me when I superimpose this 21.3. You know, this area right here. Look, it could break. And uh, look, I'm not saying go short. Because look at your 5-1 chart. It's not really a short. 
But if that area eventually holds and the five one rolls over, hell yeah. I'm just saying, it's pretty cool, right? Usually they stop out the high. So look, it's going to get right there, stop everybody out, and then if it's going to drop, it's going to drop. Now I know what you're thinking. What the freaking frack is he talking about? That's pretty specific. I've been studying a pivot stop out inside of flat sideways 21.3 triggers a lot. I've got 137 pictures of it. <clears throat> it's pretty freaking good. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling. But a feeling is not necessarily a trade. <clears throat> but I have a feeling that this area is going to determine what's going to happen next right there. And if it's right, it's going to go down to 31. And then I'm going to tell you all to go the hell away and go enjoy your weekend. And start studying your charts. If it goes down there, we'll be done. Because I'm, I'm walking off the stage if that happens. You know that, right? <clears throat> you know, and, and again, look, I was going to say I didn't make it up. I did make it up, but I made it up a long time ago. <laughs> Every time I see this, it just cracks me up. It's so old, but it still works so well. I know what you're thinking. Is it really going to make it to the mid band? We'll see. Small triggers. So it's these right here. And again, look, we didn't have large triggers back then. We only had one trigger. So obviously we kind of worked our way into having large triggers too. Which, look, this still is not 100% as good as it could be. You know, with these large triggers looming above here, I mean, they could go run the highs and have a pivot stop out before they go down. They could. I hope they don't because it's going to mess up my whole party. But And look, I want you guys to understand something. That would have been a counter trend trade had you gone short right there. And again, we're not teaching you counter trend trades. It's a cool spot. But the first trade that would fit rule, you know, unless you're doing a counter trend, the first trade would have to get down below 88 and then a little pullback. And then that would be, you see what I'm saying? That would be the future of a more conservative trade. I mean, assertively, a pivot stop out at the end would be cool. Per my momentum rules, you have to have a 13-2 down bar first you have to have a good top and then a 13-2 down bar and then a pullback so technically my momentum short rules aren't even true yet in my plan watch I'll go to my plan to do a momentum short entry after a 13-2 reversal bar is true. So we haven't even had a 13-2 down bar yet. The top is good. Right? Everything suggests the top is good. Now the triggers aren't really past the edge of fibs. Now we need momentum and to the downside. 
Which, again, I still think we made a top already, obviously, or I wouldn't have said that's going to be a top. But there's a difference between I think it's going to be a top and there's a trade. When you start doing I think it's going to be a top as your trade without any rules, that's when the wheels come off the wagon. Because then you're like, I think it's going up. I think it's going down. I think it's going up. I think it's going down. And you're not following rules anymore. You're following what you think might happen. Do you, do you guys understand the difference there? That's how you get into trouble and you start going short four or five times. And then the damn thing breaks through the high. And you're like, God dang it, I went short five times thinking it's going down. <laughs> Which we've all done. I've done it more times than I care to admit. So, and that's where I put this rule in that says I need to at least get to 3388. So I know we're making down bars on the larger chart, 13.2 chart. Then I can sell a pullback. And it keeps me patient, patiently waiting. Yeah. Here, I'll give you a Word document copy if you want so you can tweak them. There you go. And you have to understand, there's a lot of assumptive knowledge that I have in there as far as reading charts and managing trades and things of that nature. Remember when I said I wouldn't be terribly surprised because the large triggers are above here if they made a pivot stop out? Well, we'll see. <clears throat> That's still in play if we don't boogie to the downside here pretty soon. Yeah, and look, there's no reason not to. Why not? Fibs rock. It's just we're not going to finish the move until now we've got a good top and then we get more down bars and then we'll finish the move down to 81. Which they're leaning that way still. We're just not quite there yet. We've done all the work and all the analysis and everything else. Now all we need is a 5-1 chart, really. All right, Mike Silence for two minutes while you guys think of anything you want to talk about and go over in the last uh, 10 minutes here. Ben, all right, you put a pick in at 11.39. Let me go back. All right, Ben, let's take a look. <clears throat> two trades for 2K. So short, make a little money. Short at the 101, make a little money. All right. A couple little nips in there. Nice job.
And again, look, you can see this is a really good example here of why you don't get overly committed to going down when your small chart doesn't agree yet. You see that? It was cool that it bounced, but obviously the small chart says, you know, it wasn't going to happen. <clears throat> and, it, you know, it takes us back to the larger chart. Yeah. And like I said, you know, realistically, we could go take out this high because, you know, the pattern that we were talking about in the user guide having gone up strong the first time, a lot of times they go run it one more time and then we have a weaker trigger and then we have a much better top the second time. So now they did it. Now, I don't know if they'll stop or not, but you can see if they stop this time, it'll be better. They may not stop, who knows? But you guys see that? Strong the first time. Now they've screwed everybody over. Now if they make a top, if, it'll be better. They might not. <clears throat> the nice thing is we don't have to guess as to whether they're going to make a top or not. Look at what we have on our 5-1 chart. <laughs> it's not going down yet. I can tell you that. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing about market replay is it does not teach patience, does it? And, you know, there's so much time. I mean, we've really spent a lot of time talking about this area and this analysis. And, you know, and again, they eventually broke through, which is fine. Obviously, they didn't give us any pullbacks for long trades, unfortunately, but you know, again, I think that the talking through and the analysis and how long it actually, I mean, it took 30, 40 minutes to do all that. And there wasn't a lot to do. I mean, there was a couple little nips at the short side if you wanted to do them. And then, you know, this was our decision spot right here, re realistically. Right, they had to do one of two things. They either had to break above 95, which is fine, or they had to break below 89, 88, and that would have been fine too, either one. And, you know, again, they chose upside with the existing trend, so it's not terribly surprising that they ran the highs one more time. <clears throat> and now we start over. You know, and again, we're starting maybe at a little different spot this time, depending on what happens. <clears throat> We've gotten to some whole numbers. You know, again, these are the types of fibs. When you get to the last fib on the chart right there, add some whole numbers. This is the one that, you know, if it breaks, you got to really start looking above. That's, there's a long way to go, but. We'll see what happens. Or we probably won't, but again, you know, we've got a really good line in the sand here, and we'll see what they say about it. You know, they could just rip on through it. I don't know what they're going to do. Today has been one of those days. All right, and let's see what you got. All right, the NASDAQ is pretty uh, adamant in what it wants to do, huh, Ed? 34.5, mid-band and fibs hold. Triggers roll up. Long trades. <laughs> I mean, you can do no wrong going long on that one, right? Nice job. Uh, as I said, you know, the 3903, that's a nice, solid last fib on the chart. Something's going to happen there. 
They're either going to hold and roll or they're going to break. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't, it doesn't really matter. George, you went long on natural gas. Okay. <clears throat> so perfect long trade natural gas. You took profit, 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 and you've got one runner. All right, nice job. That natural gas has been good, huh, George? Oh, end result, okay. All right, so this goes back to the video I did on September 25th on YouTube. This divergence with this pivot stop out killed it. And that's why you got out. Nicely done. Stop behind the pivot. <clears throat> well, this is a pivot stop out, yes? On your 13.2? So anytime you're at a pivot stop out, you can take a trade, but as the small chart divergence starts to kick in, it means more like you're going to go stop out the lows again. So when there was no divergence, he said, I'm going long. When there's divergence and a pivot stop out, he got out. <clears throat> Let me make a picture of that just so you can see the difference. And again, go do the September 25th YouTube that I did. I, I spent a lot of time with this. So the question is, is this divergence line going to ruin my day? All right. See the difference? So you're saying, you know, that's the 50-50 or something's against you. No divergence, go. Divergence, hold your horses. I think we did, you know, somebody who's had software for 14 years said, that was the best video I've ever done on divergence ever in my life. That's September 25th. I gotta go back and watch it and see what the hell I said, cause September 26th. So this one. You know, I say stuff, I don't even remember half of the crap I say, to be honest. I just kind of say what's happening and give the lessons. I don't have a plan. I mean, Mark Moore has a plan. I'm just more going through what it is. All right. Hi right, guys, I'm done. First week back, we should start seeing even more volume picking up next week. People are gonna be heading back from vacation and should be very busy going forward from here on out. So I appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate you guys putting up with me. You guys have a fantastic weekend. Do uh, do a bunch of, look, good top, good bottom. How quickly can you get in going the other way? That's the work a lot of you guys are going to be doing over the weekend. So I appreciate you guys being here, and I appreciate you guys listening to me, and I'll see everybody Monday morning. <laughs>